this is a custom tray that I built. Basically got some uh, plastic called Kydex, real cheap on Amazon. I literally probably spent five or ten minutes building it. As you can tell, it's nothing fancy. Uh, but it serves several purposes. First of all, I don't know if any of you have ever noticed, but the rear view mirror in the P71 sits lower than it does in other vehicles. I presume this was because a lot of police vehicles will have some sort of emergency lights located where I have this tray right now. Uh, which is great when these vehicles are in service, but once you buy one at an auction and the police lights aren't there, guess what? When you're driving home and the sun is just at the right spot, you can't block it with the sun visors and it just it's blinding right there. So function number one of this tray is to block the sun that's coming in there. I know some people have said, oh, they put tint there or whatever, but I wanted to have something that could hold things. Uh, number two function of it is obviously it's a tray, so you can store things up there, sunglasses, garage door remotes, that sort of thing. So that's why I built it. Like I said, real simple, made of Kydex. Uh, I think it's glued together with crazy glue and RTV. Uh, cut it with a Dremel tool. Like I said, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on it. I uh, believe what I did was held cardboard against the windshield and cut it to get the right angle so that it would sit flush. And then I just extended the top piece just enough to go up uh, underneath the headliner there to hold it in place. I may have put like a dab of RTV on it just to kind of hold it a little bit, but not in there super secure, but it's up there well enough that it doesn't fall under hard turning or uh, heavy acceleration, anything like that. This is the dash cam. If you're not running a dash cam in every vehicle that you drive, I think you're running a big risk. The dash cam will record your driving. Well, I should say you're running a big risk if you're a generally a good driver. If you're generally a bad, inattentive, reckless, scary driver, then yeah, you probably don't want to be running a dash cam. But the dash cam will record your driving. It will record when you're approaching a green light that turns yellow. It will record whether you make a complete stop at stop signs. Generally those sorts of things. So if somebody runs a red light, and then tries to say that you ran the red light, you'll have something to prove that it was them, not you. Uh, obviously the camera is not totally infallible. It doesn't catch everything. It's limited by the angle of the lens and so forth. But uh, certainly it's a uh, valuable insurance policy for you. Uh, I believe this one costs about $15. So for about $15 per vehicle, plus whatever memory card you want to put in it, you at least have a, a cheap insurance policy to prove that uh, you are the safe driver and you weren't violating a law if you get pulled over. Uh, also they're pretty neat. I'll be honest, sometimes you'll catch stuff just driving around that uh, you didn't expect to come up on and you know you might have something that the news wants to watch or whatever. So uh, like I said, I like them real cheap. You can obviously get a more expensive one. If you really feel the need, you can hook up more than one. What I typically do on these, instead of plugging them into the cigarette lighter, which is obviously the simple way, is I try to hardwire the so that there's basically like a clean, custom type install. Uh, but if you're not sure what you want to do, certainly you can just plug it into the cigarette lighter. The center console. Most of your P71s, if you're going to pick it up at an auction, there's not going to be anything there. Some of you may get lucky, they may leave some of the hardware, so it makes it a little easier. This particular vehicle, it came literally with nothing there, no mounting brackets, not the metal tray that a lot of the police cars have. 
so this center council is available a lot of places. I've seen it at Walmart and Amazon. They're running about 20, 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. Uh, I will say the lock on it is completely worthless. Don't even worry about that. But they fit great in the Crown Vic. They give you four cup holders, two of which are very usable. The, the back two are not so usable. Uh, if you accelerate hard or brake hard, the cups in them will likely fall over. I like it because you got the big storage in the middle. You can stuff whatever junk you need in there. Uh, you also notice I have that head it looks like a headphone jack it actually plugs into the iPod and that's my aux input for my stereo so if I want to play the iPod I just have it sit there and then in the front of this one there's coin holders four different sizes so you can put your pennies nickels dimes and quarters in there uh, which is great if you're going through the drive through or if you hit a toll road or something of that nature so as far as installation you can go as fancy as you want this particular one, honestly, it's just sitting there. I put a couple dabs of RTV on the bottom of it. It's very not permanent installation. It doesn't really move around. I mean, obviously you can push on it and move it around, but I, I try not to. Uh, it'd be better to permanently mount it. I just didn't want to drill any holes in the floorboard, and I haven't gone out and tried to find the metal tray that comes with a lot of the P-71s when they're in use by police departments. Uh, another option obviously would be to custom fabricate some sort of brackets. You can go local hardware store, get some metal brackets or get uh, some Kydex and cut it, mold it how you want to, mount it to the seat posts and then you'd have something a little more permanent. But as far as cheap, simple, and easy, hard to beat the way I did it. Like I said, about 25 bucks roughly to buy the center council. A couple of dabs of RTV, plop it right down, and good to go. And the stereo. These certainly look like a double den opening. I went ahead and did the safe thing and got a single den size stereo. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the height of the stereo. This particular one is what we call single den. And then what you're seeing in a lot of the newer cars are double den. It's basically twice the height so you can have a full size screen. Uh, honestly, it looks like a double den would fit and I know there are people who post online all the time either they were able to or they weren't able to fit a double den I, I think if you were crafty and creative got a Dremel tool you can probably make just about anything fit uh, so if I ever need to replace this radio I'll probably try to do a double den this was a very inexpensive radio I didn't want to put a expensive stereo in a car that's basically as inexpensive as a P71 is. This one has a backup cam. It comes on when you put the car in reverse. Uh, plays DVDs, CDs, iPod inputs. Sound is okay. Uh, I went ahead and added a subwoofer that's powered and that made a world of difference in the sound quality. Um, I think you can tell from the camera, I'm not sure, but basically I took two pieces of Kydex, which is a uh, plastic, you can buy it on Amazon. I cut that to fit custom above and below the stereo because I wanted to get it to where the screen was uh, basically perpendicular to the ground rather than angled upward. Uh, if I put the stereo in straight it would have had the screen facing toward the roof of the car which I figured would interfere with the visibility on the backup cam so I said I kind of custom made my own brackets out of Kydex put a 
little bump in the back to hold the back of the stereo up. Uh, unfortunately, I did not film the installation of the stereo. I wish I had. I uh, probably could have learned a couple things. I do have the other video where I install a double DIN on the Chevrolet. Obviously, there's similarities and differences to installing on a Crown Vic versus on a Chevrolet. Wiring it to Breeze. Uh, I just went and found one of those little adapter brackets, soldered the wires from that bracket to the uh, connector that came with the radio, and then obviously just plug the radio connector in on one side, and you plug the adapter into the factory wiring harness, and you're good to go. Uh, went ahead and reused the factory speaker wires in uh, factory speaker locations, and just put in a supposedly upgraded speakers, although I'll be honest, I think the factory speakers sound better than the ones that I got with this radio. Right below the radio you will see a little device. That is actually the uh, backup sensor. Uh, also has front sensors as well. That was something I got off of Amazon real cheap. Uh, they have several colors to match your car. This is a silver police car, so I got the silver and I mean the, the paint on it is an incredible match. It looks like it was factory. So those basically send out, uh, the, the one I got was the 8 sensor. You could probably go with less sensors to be honest. but um, So it's got four in the rear, four in the front. It sends out uh, some sort of wave and it figures out how close or how far objects are. Um, this one's a little obnoxious in the way it announces the distance, um, but you know I'd rather have that and know that I'm getting too close to something than to bump into something that I didn't see. I've actually wired it to where obviously the reverse ones come on when you're in reverse that's a no-brainer the front ones they're wired to the brake switch so that when you press the brake pedal the front ones come on uh, what I found was if it was raining or I don't remember what other conditions but it would give a lot of false alerts to the front and it will drive you crazy when it's you know, telling you to stop because you're about to hit something and there's nothing there. So I actually put a switch between the factory brake switch and the sensor unit on there so that I can turn off the front one so that basically it, it, the unit never senses that I'm pressing the brake and therefore it never comes on in the front or if it's good weather conditions and I need the front sensors I just flip the switch and then the front ones come on. Uh, downside to that particular unit, and I'll try to see if I can find a link uh, to put in the video where you can buy it, but uh, if there's a downside I would say it's the cables that came with it to go to all the parking sensors are not long enough for a Crown Vic, let alone any bigger vehicle. Um, I can't remember how many of them I had to cut and splice in extra wiring, but it was at least two or three of the sensors that the wires were not long enough to reach. And that was routing them very simply. That was not with a lot of extra turns or anything. So um, I don't know how small a vehicle they thought that you would have, but. Like I said, the wires that come with it are definitely not long enough. This is showing the location of the parking sensors there and there. It also shows you the uh, very close match as far as color goes. That was just buying the generic silver ones. A couple of the things that you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, when I was putting in the back sensors, I ended up putting them where I had to drill through the metal bumper bracket. 
and uh, so I would say if you're going to put it in the system make sure you are doing it where you're just drilling through the bumper cover because drilling through the metal bumper was not easy <laughs> uh, two other things you'll see here these fog or driving lights and then I have lights in the grill there that are also act as uh, driving lights uh, I would have to say these and these both not good uh, these particular lights give a very dispersed light so they don't really help you when you're driving now if you are parked somewhere and somebody's needing to look for something they they light up kind of a broad all directions light so they, they can be helpful for that but not really helpful for a vehicle so I'll probably pull those off at some point uh, the lights that are in the grill there don't really help much with driving they are kind of blinding to uh, anybody that would be oncoming traffic they'd start flashing their lights at you so you can't really run those when you got traffic coming the way I actually wired them they're hooked up through a relay and if you've seen any of my other videos I will if it's not already uploaded by the time you're watching this uh, there will be a how to use relays video uh, but basically when you turn the high beams on it triggers the relay to send power to those lights so those only come on when I have the high beams on so that's kind of how I've worked around the fact that they would blind oncoming traffic uh, but I will probably here in the near future remove those and substitute in something else whether it's one of those LED light bars or just a different type of light um, but I, you know most of you who have Crown Victorias or any of their cousin vehicles you probably notice like I have the headlights are terrible on these I don't know what's wrong with them but they just don't seem to be bright enough for typical driving I mean I've got a Mustang and it lights up way better than the Crown Vic and obviously my truck does and obviously the my wife's minivan lights up so I don't know why they put such crappy headlights on these but you definitely need some sort of auxiliary lighting if you're driving a Crown Vic, at least in my opinion. So I've bought a couple different types of LED lights and I'm going to try them out and uh, I'll videotape the installation. And then I'm kind of brainstorming in my head, do I want to have them hooked up to a relay to where they come on only with low beams or only with high beams or do I want to have a switch? that turns them on and off manually or do I want to have some sort of combination of that where I can override the relay but otherwise have them come on so I haven't really decided how I want to do that yet here are two of the backup sensors again you notice for just a generic silver they actually match pretty well uh, and like I was saying had I planned this better I would have put them up higher. I think if I'd have put them up in here, I wouldn't have had to go through any metal. I would have just had to drill on the plastic bumper cover, which is a lot easier. I can tell you that putting them where I did, you do have to drill through metal, and it was not easy. So keep that in mind. There's my backup camera. You'll see I mounted it a little bit higher instead of bolting it to the license plate bolts. It's actually uh, RTV'd onto there. And it's held up very well. I've had it on there, I think, longer than a year. Uh, I think that camera was about $16 on Amazon. and Honestly, it's done a great job. I can't really complain. It definitely does not like the license plate light when, when that's on. The trailer hitch. That actually was a lot easier to install than I thought it would be. Probably the biggest issue with it was all the metal drilling 
uh, the little shavings that come down when you're drilling in the metal. So I had to clean those up with a magnet. But putting it on was pretty straightforward, just drilling holes and they give you a tool to fish the bolts through and just bolt it on, torque it down. Haven't towed anything with it yet. Auxiliary light number one. I've got in uh, both of the rear upper trim pieces. Just drilled a little hole and put the LED light in there. Looks like that one's starting to short out or something. Those are real cheap on Amazon, so I'm not too worried about it if the bulb's going out. Wiring those was a piece of cake. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know the Crown Vic P71 has the wires for a lot of the upper trim models. So it's just a matter of tapping into those wires and hooking up whatever you want to do. So like some of the uh, higher trim models of these vehicles have extra lighting that the Crown Vic doesn't have. And uh, me personally, I like to have the vehicle well lit. You know, when I'm getting in and out or if I need to find something in the car. So um, the upper lights are red and that was not for any other reason other than red lights don't affect your night vision the way uh, white light or clear light does and so the reason those particular ones are red are because I also have them wired to these switches that are in the rear doors there's one on each side it controls the light on each side so my rear seat passengers when the car is on can turn on these lights and have basically a map or reading light and so I wanted it to be red so that if I'm driving it's not affecting my night vision and uh, yet it gives them a little bit of light to do whatever they need to do the nice thing is since these switches are run through relays uh, when I open the doors it powers those lights on so these switches are an additional way to power the lights. If you switch the switch on, the light will come on. If you switch the switch off and open the door or flip the switch on the dash that turns on your interior dome light, these lights come on. So there are multiple ways to turn that light on and uh, they don't interfere with each other because it's run through a relay and you won't drain your battery because I have these switches running to key on power rather than direct to the battery so if the car is on the lights can come on but when you turn the key off the lights will turn off even if your rear seat passenger forgets to switch them off all right so i apologize for the glare on the camera i promise you it doesn't look like that in your eyes but i as part of that auxiliary lighting i added lights at the uh foot areas of all four passengers so that when you get in and out you can see again these are just inexpensive LED lights available on Amazon uh, the ones shown there have a like a two-way adhesive to stick it to the side of the car so there's no drilling required and then I just tapped into the existing lighting wiring as part of the car so those will come on whenever you open the doors or if you activate the switch on the dash that turns on your dome lighting. Real easy to do. You can add as many lights as you want. If I'm counting right, I think I've added six total lights to that system. No problems whatsoever. And the have to have mod if you have kids is DVD headrests or some sort of entertainment system. I got these, I want to say they're about $180 for the setup on Amazon uh, installation. Very straightforward. Hook them up to your key on power and then you connect the two units together so that basically you have the option of playing a movie on one and then it, the same movie play on the other screen or vice versa just kind of nice. 
uh, the kids will say, oh, I want to watch what the other one's watching, so you can just have them push a button and it switches over. I am not a sewer. I uh, want somebody to show me how to do it, quote unquote, right, but uh, as part of the, I kind of quickly sewed together just a seat back that's custom to these units so I've got the remote control the headphones place for them to put DVD movies uh, and then just kind of a generic pocket for anything else that the kids are bringing so I measured all the accessories like I said that go to the DVD and made the custom pockets for it and then I just kind of sewed it back there as best I could uh, it's ugly, I agree, <laughs> but it does serve the purpose of putting the stuff that the kids need right in front of them and you're not having to try to find stuff while you're driving. And uh, so that's why I did it. Like I said, I'm sure somebody out there can sew a lot better than I can or can think of a better way to do this I just use some really cheap material and some really heavy duty thread and just sat out here in the back seat one day and tried to sew it to the seat while it was in the car and add the uh, cigarette lighter plugs again real straightforward just tapped into key on power ran it under the back seat probably seen my video on how to remove the back seat. It's real easy to remove the bottom part. You don't even have to remove the top half of the back seat to do what, what I did here. Just pop the back seat bottom out, run your keyed on power over to where you want those. In this case I did two, one for the passenger side, one for the driver's side, rear seat. It's also, you know, not only for kids, but if you're an Uber or something, you know, people nowadays, they need to charge their phone, they need to charge their iPad or other tablet or whatever. Uh, so, that's the way to do it. Just tell them, hey, there's a cigarette plug right next to your seat. Plug into it. And they're ready to go. And if it's at night, since I installed those map lights, they can turn on the map light if they need to see where the plug is. It's probably a $10 to $20 mod, if that. I don't remember how much those uh, cigarette sockets are, but find them on Amazon cheap as you can. And if you've got wire, or if you need to buy wire, like I said, the, the total job's pretty inexpensive. This is the passenger side floorboard. And this is by far the easiest location to pass through wires if you need to get wires somewhere under the hood whether you're running from under the hood to the passenger compartment or whether you're running something from the passenger compartment out there uh, that little pass through there is very user friendly very easy to get to and right next to it, you'll see where I added the light. That was real straightforward, as I explained earlier in the video. But behind this little plastic piece here is where the factory wiring for police vehicles is. And so there is, I can't remember if it's 10 or 20 different types of hot wires there that you can tap into. Uh, some of them are battery all the time. Some of them are keyed on only power, various amperages, various wire sizes. So there's really an installer's dream there as far as if you're wanting to add something to your vehicle. The wires are probably already there. And along those lines, running underneath here on both sides of the vehicle, it's actually under this probably geographically correct. Uh, there's little plastic trays that you can run wires back and forth from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle. Uh, and so those are ready to go. 
easy to use if you've got a fish stick or something similar you just slide that right through there and it'll come out on the other side and you pull your wire through maybe wondering what this ugly thing is on my dashboard uh, reason I did it this way when I got the car there were holes drilled in this trim piece obviously where they had some police equipment probably the radio microphone but um, anyway so rather than drill bigger holes or anything I found these little plastic project boxes on uh, allelectronics.com real cheap and uh, so my fog light slash driving light switch is right here and I've wired it to where I can basically piggyback one to another off of that switch so I can have multiple switches up here eventually um, but didn't want to drill any extra holes so I actually ran behind there through the existing hole and then this box kind of covers up the hole so ugly and uh, you know it is what it is but it this one turns on the rectangular uh, lights that are stuck to the bumper not the ones that are in the uh, in the air vent area of the front grill the ones that are in the front grill turn on whenever I turn on the high beams I didn't put a separate switch for those like I said this switch just sends power to those LED lights that are attached to the bumper turning to this piece here I've replaced it this uh, is the 2005 and up style and I'll be honest the uh, older style much better much sturdier I can see having to replace this thing every couple of years the nice thing is it was a pretty easy fix um, I don't remember now how much I had to remove to get to it but um, basically the shifter knob and this whole piece is all one I was thinking when I was going to replace it that I'd be able to just replace this boot part but um, it's it's an all-in-one piece I think it was about 40 or 50 bucks but yeah poorly designed compared to the older models definitely the older models were tougher sturdier look like they last forever these typically fall apart the boot will break in here this gets all scuffed up this is actually like a soft rubber so it it'll tear up too so if you know cosmetically you're worried about it you can replace that piece like I did um, if you don't care cosmetically then more power to you can't see it on the camera but the uh, parking sensors back up and, and front sensors there's a uh, module that controls that system that's mounted underneath there this, you're looking at the passenger side front floorboard uh, in addition under there like I, said, I think I said in another video this is the spot where you want to start your wiring projects from there are uh, several factory wires there that are ready to go for aftermarket stuff there's both battery and key on only wires there different sizes different amp strengths all of them fused uh, but there's also a lot of room behind there to mount all the different control boxes that any of these accessories need and uh, so that's why I would highly recommend if you're doing any kind of aftermarket installations that you put them under there so my keyless entry I believe it was like a $20 unit off of Amazon put it in both of my crown vics it worked perfectly uh, run the relay up across here and tie into the trunk pop so I can open the trunk with the remote control and then the uh, keyless entry for the door locks runs through that rubber boot 
and then over to the uh, lock and unlock switch. Now the Crown Vic, it's what we call a reverse polarity switch. So you hook up hot and ground one direction and it locks. You, hook, you reverse those wires and it unlocks. So if you buy the system and you're trying to figure out what to do, it's the reverse polarity system. And uh, I'll make a separate video with the actual wiring. I need to go in there. When I got this vehicle, my plan was to not keep it. And then I decided to keep it. So <laughs> I'm going to have to go back in there. I, I just uh, crimped the wires when I put this in. I'm going to go back in and solder them. And so I'll show you not only how to solder them in the vehicle without damaging anything, but also you'll be able to see the color scheme of what wire goes where. And uh, so that gives you keyless entry and keyless trunk. So nice to have. It's not an alarm, there's no noises, no beeps or anything, um, but it does also flash the parking lights. And again, that's via a relay. And so again, I ran that from up there and I ran it across and over to the back of the headlight switch. And then it just triggers the same as if you are turning on the headlights to the parking lighting setting. And so I can't remember how many seconds it turns those on it's you know a couple seconds so you can see your vehicle at night um, but again no uh, chime or, or beeping or anything I, I probably could wire that up but I like to keep a lower profile I don't really like making a lot of noise getting in and out of the car uh, especially at night if you're someplace people might be sleeping or whatever